Okay, this is a video on the exponential function and logarithmic, uh, natural logarithms. Um, so, this is really going to be your first glimpse at uh, a special number known as e and ln of x, which we talk about to refer to the natural logarithm, and more on that in a moment. So, a brief introduction to this is that we should know how to sketch y is equal to 2 to the x, for example. So if we briefly see what this looks like, okay, with x and y, then y is equal to 2 to the x looks, well actually I'll do it in blue, looks something like this, okay? And it's a graph that passes through 0, 1 on the y-axis and tails off, getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but never reaching it, okay, in the negative x direction. And then it increases exponentially um, as x increases. So that's y is equal to 2 to the x. If I then look at y is equal to... 3 to the x, okay, well that's a similar looking graph, however it's steeper because um, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the 4, it's increasing faster than 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4, okay, so that's why it has a steeper gradient. And likewise, um, increases in the negative x direction quicker towards the x-axis. So this is y is equal to 3 to the x. Still going through 0, 1. So maybe there is um, a number so that when I draw, well, y is equal to a to the x, maybe there is a number a such that the graph, when it comes into 1, Okay, the gradient is 1 at this point. So I'm looking at a specific function such that maybe there is a value for a such that the gradient of the tangent line at 1 for this red curve is 1. And, well, there is, and this is specifically what we're looking at for the exponential function and we label this value as e. Now the reason why we can't, we don't write it down as a number in itself like 2 or 3 is because e is irrational. Uh, it's like pi so it's a non-repeating decimal that goes on and on and on forever and e is between this 2 and 3, and it goes 2.718218 dot, 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 okay? And it keeps on going on and on and on forever. You can find it on your calculator um, looking at E. There's a part in yellow um, above a block saying LN of E the square symbol. So if you wanted to check that, that's e to the 1. Okay. So whenever we write e, I'm meaning e to the 1. And another property that comes from this e is that if I want to find the gradient at any point of this curve, so for y is equal to e to the x, the gradient of this curve, dy by dx, is also equal to e to the x. So actually when I differentiate e to the x, I get e to the x. And when I integrate e to the x, I get e to the x, which is a very nice thing to have to remember, okay? It's nice and easy and straightforward. And that's a key property of this function. So... What's so special about it? 
Well, E comes up in a number of different parts of mathematics, and it comes up in nature as well. It's one of those special numbers that just keeps on coming up all over the place. It especially comes up in um, biology and chemistry for um, radioactive decay. Um, it comes up in finance um, with compound interest and so on and so forth. And there's so many uses for it. So that's why we look at it and this is the mathematics behind it. Now, I said that there was going to be something to do with logarithms here. Um, because we're working with y is equal to e to the x, um, well, let's have a look at this y is equal to 2 to the x again. If I write this in logarithmic notation, that means that x is equal to log 2 of y. Okay? So... You, this is the transpose of logarithms um, that you should know. So if I'm looking at y is equal to e to the x, then I'm looking at log base e. Now, log base e is what we call a natural logarithm, and it has its own notation. We Instead of writing log e... It's perfectly fine to write log e, but seeing as mathematicians use it so much and so often, uh, we came up with a shorthand for ln y in this case. So y is equal to e to the x, then x is equal to log y. Okay. What that means is that if I write x is equal to log y, then y is equal to e to the log y. So for these two to be the same, the e and the log effectively cancel each other out. They are inverse functions of one another, and that's something that we're going to be learning about later on, inverse functions. And what that means is that uh, y is equal to log x looks like this going through 1 on the x-axis and steadily increasing, okay, but it never reaches the y-axis. So this is equal to y is equal to log x. And you might notice that there appears to be some form of symmetry going through, well, either side of the line y equals x. And that's true, there is. Um, it is a mirror line. Um, because these graphs are infer inverse functions of one another, that is one of the properties of inverse functions, which, again, we will look at later. So, because we're now looking at logarithms with y is equal to log x, it's natural to assume, then, that the laws of logarithms that we've learnt also maintain. So, beforehand, we've had log a of p plus log a of q would be equal to log a of p q. Okay? That's one of the laws of logarithms. So now, because we can work in log base e, the natural logarithms, it works in exactly the same way. Okay? And likewise, we can write down the other laws of logarithms. So log of p, take away log of q, would be equal to log of p over q. And there's the third law that says that log of p to the power of q is equal to q log p. The power can come down to the front. Or if you're working with the other side, the q can come up to the power of p. Okay, so that these are the laws of logarithms that we work with at this stage of using natural logarithms. So ultimately, what we have is 
um, a way that's going to help us solve equations with this special number. We're going to see uh, what we're going to be doing with it in another video. And what you need to take away from this is how what e to the x actually looks like and what the laws of logarithms now look like when we're working with natural logarithms.